What I want to do today is have a look at a new feature in Houdini 17, actually a new workflow, which is on the one hand volume sourcing for simulations, and on the other hand smoke sourcing and detection. Full disclosure, this technique was heavily inspired by stuff that's going on on the Houdini beta forum, so thanks so much guys for helping, for sharing these techniques and uh, making this accessible to everyone, I guess. So in order for that, I downloaded a 3D scan of a donut. It can be any product basically, but I mean, I'm kind of into donuts and they are quite colorful. Um, I'll link to the scan that I downloaded in the description. And in Houdini, I'll just load it up by dropping down a geo node, diving in there, and then using the new GLTF node to load a GLTF file that I downloaded from Sketchfab. And GLTF is kind of the JPEG, the SVG, or the MP4 of 3D formats. It is destined to become a new standard for anything 3D that is on the web. And with Houdini 17, side effects also introduce a loader for this format. So GLTF it is, gonna select my file here, zoom out a bit, and I see this is the coarse mesh of a 3D scanned donut. I'll just drop down a subdivide node in here to resample the mesh a bit, set this to open subdiv loop, and maybe two iteration steps, so we have a more high resolution mesh like this. Could also use a resample for example, but subdivide in this case will be okay. UV is coming in through our file loader, that's good. Just gonna transform this and rotate it so it sits in my scene along the ZX plane. Next, I'm gonna use the attrib from map to write some color information on those points that form the mesh. And I'm gonna use the provided texture that came with the 3D scan. So when I highlight this, I can see I have a coarse texture of my donut here. Maybe increase our subdivisions, increase the mesh resolution and also the texture resolution. Next, I'll drop down a pyro source node and I will just create one attribute which is gonna be the density and set it to a default value of one. And you can see this is part of the new sourcing workflow for DOPS and smoke simulations, where Houdini uses uniformly scattered points, uniformly distributed points on a mesh, which will then be converted into a sparse volume, which has the advantage that it makes most sourcing operations quite a bit faster than the usual way. So after that, I'll append a volume rasterize attributes here, which will convert the data stored on these points here into volumes. And I'd like to convert my density, my color diffuse, and an alpha field into volumes. So let's highlight this, middle mouse on it, and you can see as there is no alpha on my actual texture, we didn't create the alpha attribute, but only the density and the color diffuse. Let's just keep the alpha if there's a case where I have a texture that has an alpha attribute with it. So this is the tree that I generated for my color volume. So I'm gonna use this volume to read colors from it. Let's drop down a volume visualizer and use the CD field as a color, wire this in here, highlight it, and we can see we have this colored field of the donut and its texture. So I'm gonna use that as a collider for my smoke simulation that I'll build now. And for this smoke simulation, the first thing I need is an emitter. I'm gonna use a simple sphere for now. Gonna drop down a sphere here, turn this into a polygon. Let's highlight this and maybe ghost our donut here. Increase the frequency of our sphere to maybe eight, dial back the uniform scale a bit, and then move over that center here. Let's move it to minus 3.15 on this side here, so it sits within the donut's mesh. Next I'll use a normal SOP to create point normals, and then use an attribute, rename, to rename my normals into a velocity. So what I do here is just normals on a sphere are just vectors that point outside. Let's highlight them and visualize them. So these vectors here, and I just renamed them to V. So we're gonna use them as an initial velocity in our simulation. So the smoke is pushed outwards from our emitter. Then again, for sourcing, I'll drop down a pyro source, wire this up, and I'll source two attributes. On the one hand, the density. On the other hand, the velocity. So when I highlight this, I see my uniformly scattered points, middle mouse on it, with my attributes density, P scale, and V for velocity. Next, I'll drop down a color sop to give these points and the resulting volume an initial color. In our case, let's dial it to 80% white. And then as on this side, I'm just gonna drop down a volume rasterize attributes. And in here, I wanna rasterize four attributes, the density, the color, the alpha, and the velocity called V. Highlight this middle mouse on it. And again, no alpha yet, just as a measure, if in any case you're gonna use a texture on this geometry that has an alpha, we have it in there. 
Okay, let's drop down two nulls, call one out underscore color, and the other one out underscore emitter. And also what I like to do, drop down a third null, which I'll append before the pyrosource here, and this will be my collider. So call this one out collider. So my three out nodes here that are relevant for the simulation. On the one hand, my emitter, that's where I'll start emitting smoke from, that's my sphere here. Then the color, that is the donut volume, which I'll use to colorize the smoke in my simulation. And finally, the collider, which I'll use to confine my smoke within this donut shape. Let's just save this maybe. Next, let's drop down a dotnet and build the actual simulation. Dive in there. And let's build this starting from the output. So what I like to use, not sure if I'm going to use it in the final simulation, but let's just drop it down so we have it, a general gravity force, and then a merge to merge in on the one hand a static object and then our simulation. So I'm going to use a static object and a static solver. While the static object into the static solver and into the merge and then our Pyro solver, which will solve the smoke simulation. And we're going to use a smoke object as the dop object that we're going to solve with this solver. We'll need a gas resize fluid dynamic to dynamically adjust the bounds of that simulation. And let's start with that and then build on top of this. So this is our bread and butter smoke simulation. Let's wire in our collider in here just by pointing the stop path to our out collider. And in the collision, in the RVD solver, in the volume, let's maybe increase the divisions of our collider volume. That means the resolution of our collider volume and also invert its sign. So as we're emitting inside of this volume, we also want the quote unquote normals of this volume to be pointing in the opposite direction. So we generate a kind of a hollow torus here with which our simulation will collide. In the smoke object, let's set the initial size to be maybe 12 by four by 12. So it encloses the whole donut here. And in our gas resize fluid dynamic, we want to dial in a delay frames so that we only kick in after the first frame after something has been sourced here. Otherwise, what will happen is the gas resize fluid dynamic on the first frame won't find any volumes that are emitting in here and just will scale the whole simulation area to a very small area in the center of our scene and thus not be able to calculate the simulation. Also in the max bounds tab, let's uncheck clamp to maximum bounds. And finally, what we need is a smoke source. Let's use a volume source for that. Why this in the last slot of a pyro solver. And we want to source from our out emitter here. And we will source four different attributes. We will source a vector called V, which will write into our velocity field. We just like to copy over our velocity from our emitter geometry into our velocity field and scale it a bit. So give it a bit more velocity. And let's start with 50. Quite high, but it worked in my case. Next, I'd like to again create a vector, this time the color. So that's CD, target field is CD2. And in this case, I'd like to use the blend operation. That means it weighs the color on the one hand with the density. So higher density means higher color intensity. And on the other hand, with the alpha, if we have it. Finally, we want to source two scalars, which is the density and also the temperature. So target field is temperature. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to use density as a temperature value too. Let me just check both are set to add. And let's just scale our density by a factor of 10. So it gets more dense. Let's uncheck the visibility of our collider object here. Save this, keep our fingers crossed and hit play. And we can see a very rough, very coarse simulation, but we're emitting smoke and due to the gravity, this falls to the inside of the donut and stays there and floats along there. So that is working nicely. Let's just increase the resolution a bit by going to the smoke object and dialing down the division size to 0.1 for now. It's a bit more precise. And let's use this really coarse setup to generate colored smoke where our smoke hits the donut on the inside. For that, I'll drop down a merge after my first volume source. And I'll drop down a second volume source. Call this one volume source underscore color. Wire this into the merge. So the way merges work in DOPS is first, this node will be executed in the solver. And then we go back up again. And then this node here will be executed. And in here, all I want to source is one single field, which will be a vector and which of course will be CD. And again, we'll set it to blend and use density slash alpha. 
as our weights here. Let's hit play on that simulation and there isn't much we can see yet. However, let's head up one level and use a dop.io to import all those fields from that simulation here. So I'll just drag this dot .network into my dot .network slot and within the dot .node slot, I'll select my smoke object here that I used for simulation. Now I'll just choose the smoke preset here and this automatically generates imports for the density, velocity, the rest position, which we didn't use in that simulation yet, the temperature field and the color field. Let's append a volume visualize after that. And in here in the diffuse field, let's set this one to color CD, wire this up, highlight it, maybe reset it. And there isn't much we can see yet. Let me check what I missed here. So on the one hand, what would be nice is in the dot net, in the volume source color, of course, I forgot to assign a sop where we could source the color from. So let's fix that and select our out color here. Then reset the simulation, go up one level. And in the volume visualization, my diffuse field should be set to CD point star. So we have the RG and B field imported there. And also what I like to do is dial up the density scale to 10. So we get a more dense volume to look at. Now, if we hit play, we can see in those areas where our smoke collides with the donut, it takes the color. So let's reset that, save this, and in our dot net, let's dial in the simulation a bit. What I'll do first is resize the voxel size to get a bit more detail here, and then disable the gravity. And within the pyro solver, I'll dial the buoyancy lift to zero so the smoke doesn't rise anymore. Let me just check, I'll disable combustion, and within the shape, Let's dial back the dissipation to 0.07. Same goes for the color. And in the advanced tab, if you feel lucky, if you have a decent graphics cards with lots of memory, you can check use OpenCL, which will speed up your simulation times quite a bit at the cost of having to fit this all into your VRAM of your graphics card. Or you're gonna use the CPU as an OpenCL processor. That works as well. Not gonna get into that, just gonna dive up and let this simulate a bit. And after a good while, we end up with something like this here, this silly looking donut smoke that is filling our donut shape. So this is your standard basic setup for coloring a smoke simulation and advecting the colored smoke. And then there's the usual magic of shading, lighting and rendering, which is, I think, a topic for another tutorial, maybe one on Patreon. So if you like what we do and would like to get access to more in-depth knowledge, more long form courses, head over to our Patreon and see what we have there. And with that being said, special thanks to all of our patrons, especially Kyoko Sakane, Important Looking Pirates, Joseph Howerton, Derek A. Johnson, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, Rob Bryant Jr. and Mohamed Alabri. Thanks so much, guys. As always, let us know if you create any artwork using these techniques. We're always looking forward to seeing this. And with that, it's cheers and goodbye.